Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome uh, to the first edition in the series of uh, student lecture at the University of Derby. Although we are starting that with the, the College of Business Law and Social Sciences, I'm sure other colleges will be rolling out uh, similar uh, editions in the very near future. Uh, if I can just uh, remind all those people who are attending that this event is being recorded, so that at least we are aware. A few of uh, housekeeping rules. Uh, there will be about 40 minutes for the lecture, and I will be introducing the speaker very shortly. Uh, in between, there are two parts mainly. The first part will focus on the activities within the uh, divisions of uh, Hilton Hotel, as it were. And uh, this will take roughly about 15 to 20 minutes. And uh, the speaker will pause for us to be able to ask, ask some few questions. And thereafter, we'll carry on for the second part, which will focus more on our experience in strategic management, uh, particularly in our role as HR director within this uh, very big chain of business in hospitality. So without further ado, <clears throat> I would like to introduce our speaker for today. It's none other than Neve Jordan. Neve Jordan started a career in hotel operations, graduating from Dublin Institute of Technology with a degree in hospitality management. Gaining experience across all departments in four and five star hotels in Dublin, Cork, Athlone, and London. Neve had, had the opportunity to become a general manager for a new opening in London, Crown Moral Hotel, and then was a general manager at the Foster Silver Springs Hotel in Cork. In 2008, Neve decided to switch to human resources management, but continued to work in the hospitality industry exclusively. She worked for a small independent group called Gresham Hotels, and then for Radisson Blue for five years. Since 2018, Neve has been the director of human resources at Faster Conrad, Dublin, a part of the luxury division of Hilton Hotel. It's my pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce to you Neve Jordan. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Camille, for that very kind introduction. Um, thank you everybody for coming along today. Uh, as Camille mentioned, um, I will be covering some information about Hilton and then about Conrad and the brand and we'll allow for some questions and then we're going on to move on to the strategic management side of it, specifically HR focused. And what I've done is I'm going to share with you my HR strategy for this year in a particularly unique year with its own challenges. So I'm going to start off with showing you a uh, our Hilton brand video, which gives some details on our mission and our values. We are a big name in a world that's getting smaller every day. What we do matters. How we join in matters. What we stand for matters. We are hospitality, a responsibility we have never taken lightly. Almost 100 years ago, Conrad Hilton set out to fill the earth with a light and warmth of hospitality. Times have changed and changed again. We've grown, adapted, innovated. But that ambition 
that responsibility to bring light and warmth to people's lives has never faltered. And it never will. Our instinct is still that we look outward, beyond ourselves, to create heartfelt experiences for guests, meaningful opportunities for team members, high value for owners, and positive impact in our communities. We delight with our warmth and smiles and encourage unity through a shared purpose, creating millions of exceptional experiences every day by dedicating ourselves to shaping moments that matter, that people will remember and cherish. They may be small moments, from a fresh cup of coffee to a warm smile at the end of a long day with more ways to connect when you want to and disconnect if you really need to. Or they may be the landmarks of life, the beginning of a new journey made unforgettable, a celebration made magical, the speech that transforms a career. For us, celebrating every one of these moments is what we do. Each one is an experience we can add to and enrich. Why? Because we care. Because every one of us at Hilton is driven by a passion that makes the world a richer, warmer, happier place. For our guests, for each other, and for the communities that surround and support us, just as we surround and support them. This is at the heart of who we are and what we do. We're here to fill the earth with the light and warmth of hospitality by helping to create exceptional experiences. Every hotel, every guest, every time. We are Hilton. We are hospitality. So, just to tell you uh, uh, another few little facts about Hilton, so I'm sure all of you recognise the Hilton brand, and we are one of the leading global hospitality companies. We actually have 18 brands spanning the lodging sector, and our brands are comprised of more than 6,110 properties globally, nearly 972,000 bedrooms, and we're in 1,139 countries and territories. Our vision to fill the earth with the light and the warmth of hospitality by creating and or sorry, by delivering exceptional experiences, every hotel, every guest, every time. These are literally the words of our founder, Conrad Hilton, and he truly believed that this was possible. Every hotel, every guest, every time. Our mission to be the most hospitable company in the world by creating heartfelt experiences for guests, meaningful opportunities for team members and high value for owners with a positive impact on our communities. Personally, what I like about that is in the hospitality business, of course, the guest comes first, but after that is actually team members rather than the company. And um, so we focus very much, happy team is happy guests. Our values. So linked to the name Hilton, H-I-L-T-O-N. In my opinion, some of these values actually almost cannot be taught, but you have to come to work for us with those as your values. But we can teach people how to hone those skills and be better and better at expressing them. Hospitality, that word speaks for itself, always welcoming. Integrity. To my mind, integrity means always doing the right thing, even when no one is watching. Leadership, no matter what your role in the hotel, you are a leader. Teamwork, that speaks for itself. There's nobody within the hotel who can do their job on their own. Ownership, we take responsibility for what we do and we choose to do it well. 
and now, that sense of urgency that if we're going to do something, we get it done in a timely manner. So we celebrated 100 years in 2019. And at that milestone, we had over 100 million guests signed up to our Hilton Honours. So Hilton Honours, um, like any other awards program, you earn points as you stay. But ours, in my experience, and I have worked for other international chains, um, ours is you get your rewards that little bit faster. They get the upgrades, the free meals, even the free stays, and you clock up points very, very quickly. Hilton is a local business operating on a global scale. And what that means is that our hotels are individual. Our own hotel, Conrad Dublin, is a pretty good example of that, where everything we do is centred about around the local area, from the decor in the hotel to the welcome that we give guests. When people come to Dublin, they want an Irish welcome. So if you're staying in a Conrad in Chicago or in um, Shanghai or in Dublin, you're experiencing local um, rather than that cutty cut, cookie cutter approach where you could be staying anywhere in the world. In 2009, we introduced our light stay practices, and that's very much linked to our CSR program, which is travel with purpose. Using our passion for hospitality to make lasting positive impact on people's lives, our communities and the environment. So last year, a number of goals um, were set for our, uh, we set ourselves in Hilton, a 50% reduction in water use, to get to zero soap to landfill, double our investments in social programs, and cut our environmental footprint. And we set a target of a 61% reduction in carbon emissions. And bear in mind, We'd already been doing that for 10 years, but we expect to actually get better and better at it. What's important for us, of course, is we never compromise on the guest experience while doing that. I'm sure many of you have heard of great places to work. And um, so in 2019 and 2020, we were the number one company in um, America to work for and number two in the world which I think is pretty incredible for a hospitality company when you consider some of the other huge tech companies, finance companies. Um, it, it's incredible to think that a hospitality company, which normally has a reputation as being difficult to work in, but we're number one in the US and number two in the world is a great place to work. Um, at the moment, we're number three in the United Kingdom. Um, having come in, I think, at number five the previous year and come up to number three. We are good to our team and we're recognised for it. One of the most popular benefits we have is our Go Hilton, our team member and family travel programme. The so team members um, can stay in Hilton hotels anywhere in the world, any of the brands for between 45 um, euros per night. Sorry, I talk in euros because I'm from Ireland. Up to 75 euros to stay in the luxury hotels. Now, other companies do have this kind of um, benefit program, but in Hilton, it's a real, really easy to get. A hotel it has to prove that it's going to be 92% full before it can close out the team member program. We also have that friends and family program where you sign up your friends and family and they can stay at 50% 50, 50 of best available rate in any of those hotels. Personally, I got to stay before all of the, the madness of this pandemic started. I got to stay in um, the Conrad in Chicago, $75 um, per night it was. And because I was a team member, I got upgraded to a suite. The stories our team have about the places they've seen in this world um, for a, a fraction of the normal cost. And it's very important as well to us that we look after team members when they're staying in our hotels. So that is a very genuine part of the benefit of working for Hilton. We have competitive starting and benefits and we have a huge amount of recognition programmes, both at Hilton level and then also at individual hotel level. 
We have our Thrive at Hilton that was launched about three years ago. So the idea that we focus on three aspects, body, mind, spirit. We're very aware that if you have a happy, healthy team, that pretty much takes care of everything else because they do their jobs well and they stay with you. So the idea with body, your um, people are fit, they're eating well, they're getting enough um, sleep, they're not stressed. Mind is about development, making sure that we have constant development programs for our team so they feel they can keep growing with us. And then spirit, so that people can feel good about what they're doing, that they're working for a company that makes a difference with our partner charities um, and what we do for the environment. At Conrad Dublin, we actually opened our own dedicated team member gym. So this gym is just for team members, open 24 hours a day, not where some hotels you might have access for a couple of um, off-peak hours and um, the guests wouldn't be using it. We have a dedicated team member gym, which is extremely popular. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit more specifically about Conrad Dublin. And once we've talked about Conrad Dublin, we'll pause for a few moments just for some questions about the brand before we move on to the strategic management side. We have 192 bedrooms and um, in normal times we have about 200 up to 220 team members. In our conference and events we have nine meeting rooms. We have three food and beverage outlets, the Coburg, the Terrace and the Mules and we have a major expansion project planned in 2022 where we're going to add a substantial amount of bedrooms um, and build a large spa and add other food and beverage outlets. A lot of people um, ask me to explain what is the difference between a normal hotel where you would get great service and a luxury hotel, Conrad being part of the luxury division of Hilton. And I think that the Conrad brand has come up with a great way to give team members guidance on what this is and it's it's very useful I think for students as well to look at this as a as a, a roadmap as such to what is great service. So we have our Conrad Compass which is stay inspired. So all our team members on the first day, first day is a full day's training orientation all about the company and um, where you need to go to find everything in your work. And then um, within the first two weeks, they do their Stay Inspired training, which is a full day's training to give them the tools to carry out all the activities on this compass. So to provide flawless and timely service that's intuitive and responsive, to deliver innovative and unexpected experiences, to create authentic connections that celebrate local culture, and to ensure personalized service at every guest touch point. And to us, every guest touch point is every single team member. Now I'm going to show you a brief clip, which is basically a guided tour of the hotel. And um, I'm sure most of you can see the background behind me. That is actually our presidential suite, which is very popular actually with a lot of the media types. We won, we won in the World Travel Awards for 2020. Um, leading luxury hotel in Ireland and we won leading luxury suite with our suite and um, our presidential suite which we're very proud of. So I'll let the video play and it give you a nice guided tour of the hotel. <laughs>
So um, this summer we're hoping um, to offer, well, not hoping, we are offering placements, um, year-long placements and summer placements, because we do um, expect now that this vaccine rollout is gearing up significantly, that meaningful travel will start um, within Ireland and the UK. And um, while there is Brexit, there is free movement between um, Ireland and England, which is fantastic. And so we expect a lot of UK visitors and um, with uh, ferries. So we do expect to start getting quite busy. And then, of course, we all hope by the end of this year, international travel will restart. So we're offering paid placements in food and beverage. I have conference and events operations in, in brackets there because, of course, um, a lot is dependent on what happens um, with um, the pandemic. But we do expect by quarter four this year, the conference and events will be back up and running. And we also have housekeeping and culinary and front office, depending on experience. We have what's a, a, a couple of great points about coming on placement with us is we have our own full time learning and development person. And so what this means is we have a huge amount of access to actually on site training, as well as a coordinator with our massive Hilton University library. So you can imagine a company the size of Hilton, our online uh, learning facility is enormous. And in the last two years, we've signed up to collaborate with Harvard Managed Mentor and also with LinkedIn Learning. So as a team member with Hilton, you actually have access to all of those libraries of training as well. We also have a very collaborative management team who are extremely good with students who are on placement and very good about teaching them all those little extra things rather than just what you need to learn as part of a job and are very good about helping with projects. We also give the option of moving around departments depending on how long you're coming to work for us. And of course, there's the added benefit of living in Dublin. Uh, it is it's an expensive city, but like any city, once you're living in it, you know all the right places to go. And the fact is, it really is quite fun. I want to just quickly tell you about some of the graduate programmes that are available with Hilton, because that could be of interest to a lot of you, even if you're not interested in coming to us at Conrad Dublin. We have our commercial graduate programme, EDGE. So that is two um, placements. Um, in different areas. They're all in Watford in our head office in the UK. So in Watford, they have a very large office and they manage um, the revenues for a lot of EMEA. Um, so you get 18 months placement. So it's broken up into one is mainly on reservations and the other is around uh, groups and conference and events. So and then you're guaranteed a job at the end of it. We also have our Elevator General Manager Graduate Programme. So the idea with our Elevator Programme is that you can become a General Manager within seven years. So it's like our Elite Graduate Programme. That is made up of two nine-month international placements. Um, Conrad Dublin, we're, we're always hosting an Elevator because we are considered a really good place for Elevators to come and learn. So one of the nine month placements is in operations. So front office, food and beverage, accommodation, engineering. The other nine months is more the management side. So your commercial side, human resources and finance, as well as working a little bit with the general manager. So a very, very intensive 18 months. And then you are guaranteed an assistant HOD or HOD role when you graduate out of the elevator program and head office, you're mentored by a general manager to get you on a career path to be a general manager within seven years. We have our finesse graduate program um, and that is to 12 month international placements across EMEA. Plus we will support in SEMA qualifications or what are the, whatever are the relevant uh, accounting qualifications in the country you want to end up in. Um, so very, again, intensive, but the idea is by the end of it, you will be as an assistant financial controller um, role uh, with a view to getting you to finance director. And we also have our management development program, which is an operations based one. So the idea is it can fast track you to getting to um, a head of department role. And um, it also focuses a little bit on engineering. Um, so the idea is, again, um, two placements 
and um, moving around and um, getting uh, in-depth information into all the different departments of the hotel and getting you ready for that step very quickly into the head of department um, level. Um, because we're going to focus on strategic management today, um, any questions you have about placement or the graduate programme, it might be best to reach out to me directly. Um, I have my email there. I also recommend maybe you follow us um, on Instagram on our Conrad Dublin Talent or on LinkedIn on our Conrad Dublin Talent um, as well page. Also, Hilton have a really great career centre. It'll only take you a couple of minutes to log on, create a profile, and then what happens is you will be sent alerts of jobs that come up with the criteria that you've set. So it's really easy, go in, log in, and then if you fancy getting a job in New York, um, it will pop up with jobs there. And um, so it makes it quite easy. And then you just you're in our talent pool and you get um, any information on relevant roles that you're interested in. Now, I was asked just to give a few tips on employability. And um, I actually uh, ended up writing an article and putting it on LinkedIn yesterday. So you can always have a look there. And um, because what was happening is I deal with a lot of hospitality schools and a lot of lecturers have asked me to do this, but I'm going to whistle through a few some of these may, may seem basic to some of you, but I promise you, I keep seeing these same mistakes being made over and over and over again by students coming on placement or by graduates. So just these are the tips of what I know I and all my colleagues at HR director level or GM level looking out for. So the CV. To be honest, I rarely see um, spelling mistakes or grammar mistakes. However, what I do see is cluttered, unclear and too much information or too much irrelevant information. Tailor your CV for the job you're going for. A lot of people tend to do a CV and think that's it. You have to tailor it for the job you're going for and focus on the relevant information to the employer you're looking to get a job with. The email it's attached to. A huge mistake, I would say, could be 40 to 50 percent of applicants make. They do a lovely job on their CV and then the email they send is completely unprofessional. Either um, no proper greeting, like dear Neve, um, or um, misspelling my name, using abbreviations that you would use in text, um, no proper ending, like kind regards, um, no proper grammar, like using your capitals. So remember, the first thing the person recruiting you sees is actually the email before they open your CV. And the fact is, if your email's that bad, they may not even open the CV. Grooming. Um, I come across this a lot. If you want to work in a five star hotel, which is where I work, you have to look like you made an effort for the interview. That is just the reality of it. And um, if there's other industries where you would like to work where appearance, it isn't that somebody has to be good looking. Let's be really clear on that. But you have to have look well groomed, hair brushed, you've shaved. If you have a beard, it's trimmed and um, put on a nice top. Don't be wearing a T-shirt. And um, a lot of virtual interviews are happening at the moment, but I see that actually being something that stays and um, simply because it saves so much time. And um, so please remember your grooming. Do your research. About 20% of the people I interview didn't even look up our website. Not exactly the hardest thing to do. Be clear on the job you're looking for. Um, I do get an awful lot of graduates drop me an email, say, oh, I'd love a job with your hotel. You go, well, what job do you want? Oh, I don't know, whatever you have. Or I want something in the office or something in management. That is absolutely no use to me. I need to know what you want. I need to know what you're good at. I want to need to know what you're um, applying for. I need to know, particularly as a graduate or a student, that you actually have some kind of career path. If you're coming on placement, it's perfectly acceptable to be swinging between two or three departments. That's the whole point of placement. But if you're a graduate, you need to be a little bit more focused and clear on what you're looking for. 
Social media, I also would um, guard against with LinkedIn, you need to don't be just sending messages like you would on any other social media to senior managers in hotels saying, oh, I'd love to get a job with you. That isn't how you apply for a job. We all know how you should apply for a job. And also just be very aware of your LinkedIn profile, the photo, the photo you have on Tinder should not be the photo that you have on LinkedIn, which sadly I see from time to time. Your email address is professional as well. Um, and make sure what you post there. I do see people have rants on LinkedIn. That is not the place for it. Um, you're entitled to your opinion, but Twitter and other social media platforms are, are, are for that purpose, not LinkedIn. Prepare for the interview in that it can be hard to know what questions you're going to ask, but almost 90% of the time, the first question is going to start with, the first question will be, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, and you'd be surprised how many people go, oh, uh, what do you want to know? Like, I want to know about you. So prepare for that first question. The person does want to know more about you. It's a bit of an icebreaker, and it also indicates your communication skills particularly important in hospitality or if you want to be a manager, you have to have good communication. So don't forget to prepare for that question rather than all the difficult ones you're dreaming up in your mind later. Also have a couple of good questions yourself to ask the interviewer. Do not ask, the first question is how much money? Don't ask that question. And um, you should ask some clever questions like, um, oh, I see you were with the company for five years. Why have you stayed with them so long? Or what do you like about the people you work with? Those are good questions. And um, while money is important and nobody expects you to take a job without discussing it, do not let it be the first words out of your mouth, which is, is quite a common mistake um, made. I'm going to pause briefly there for any questions just on the brand before we start on the strategic management um, part. Uh, hi, Neve. Thank you for everything so far today. It's uh, really educational, fantastic. Uh, there's been a lot of comments and questions, as you can imagine, uh, yeah. many of which have been about uh, placements, etc. So I've just been replying to that. But just to reiterate that, um, do some research behind that and then if you got any specific questions maybe you can contact me using the email address slide but um your pats will be happy to help and i'll be happy to help with that but some of the questions that have come up on there there's some been some really interesting um questions excuse me uh that have come up uh this afternoon uh regarding um getting into the uh luxury sector. Uh, one in particular here is from Anonymous. It says, any advice for a student who has over five years experience in luxury and four star hotels and resorts getting ready to finish their degree and wants to go directly to the industry? What advice would you give them now, um, especially with the pandemic the issues we're facing at the moment? Um, and, that, and that's a very good question. Um, I'm going to share one little nugget of information um, with you all first, and that's that I graduated in hospitality in 1991. Um, you're all far too young to uh, know you weren't even born then, um, but there was a very severe recession at that time. So when I came out and graduated, there were no jobs. Um, I think you were all in the luxurious position that we will bounce back very quickly and we will be, it will be growing and this time next year it'll all be forgotten. So the biggest piece of advice I would give anybody at this stage is get into the right company. Uh, I think sometimes graduates are too focused on that first title. They want to come out of and, and graduate. And I know you've put in all that hard work and they're focused on, no, I want manager in my job title or assistant manager. Or I think that is you could be missing the mark. Um, you're much better off to get into a really great company, a big brand. It could be a small bespoke brand, um, but get in with them and then there's you can progress so quickly because you have that degree behind you and you can show the right attitude. So you could start somewhere as, let's say, a bartender or, you know, um, working in food and beverage. But within six months, you could be supervisor and on a training program to get you to assistant HOD. And you could be, have that assistant HOD role within a year or 18 months. So there's that little bit of patience. 
I know that's not always easy, but my absolute biggest piece of advice is get into the right company right now and take that risk. It will pay off without question. I, I hope that answers that. Uh, I think that that's a, a very good answer. Thank you for that. One very quick uh, last question, uh, if we can keep it brief. Um, we've had a couple of questions and comments come through about transferable skills and transferability of skills. Now, that, for example, uh, students may be studying on one of our service sector programmes, whether that be in tourism, hospitality, etc. But maybe have the um, urge to go into more of a HR role, but that's not essentially what they've studied. How important are those transferable skills and how best can they demonstrate that? Um, and and th that's a really good question because I would actually, um, I think we all know it, it's actually quite hard to get into HR because you're hitting that conundrum of not having the experience. If HR in hospitality is your goal, um, again, I'd go with the get into the right brand um, because most brands have um, I know I didn't put it up on the graduate programs because it's not necessarily a graduate program, but within Hilton, we have our HR excellence program. So those level one, level two, level three. So level one is for those line members of staff who want to get into HR. Level two is for those at HOD level who maybe want to try and get to a director level. And then HR EP3, which is to get to an area level. So a good company will have that um, HR aspect. I, I think um, I'd agree. I think you have a good knowledge of actually hotel operations and how a hotel works makes you a really good HR manager or HR director in a hotel. And the beauty of that is, I'll be honest, any industry will take you if you're HR in hospitality, simply because they are extremely complex businesses mixed with that extremely high level of customer service. So if you can get in, if you get in to a good company, again, you can develop in HR. And then, of course, you can also do a part time course with some kind of HR element or do a master's or your company might be willing, investing and paying that for you. I, ho I hope that helps rather than somebody having to think, oh, I'd like HR and then have to start from scratch and spend three, four years studying HR. I think you can you can move to it very easily and get a very good. I don't have a HR degree. Um, I have a hospitality degree and I learned all the HR through programmes within the companies I worked with. Uh, I hope that. that. Uh, very much appreciated. Uh, if we can move on for that, but just uh, for everybody in the audience, um, Neve's going to continue now with her uh, talk and so about strategic management. As again, if you have any particular questions, please put them in the comments box and we'll try to answer as many as we can at the conclusion of Neve's talk. Thank you, Leonard. OK, so I am um, every year I would have a detailed HR plan. Obviously, this year um, was a bigger challenge. Where we start off is with our area goals. So these are the Hilton area goals for 2021. So to accelerate recovery, it bounce forward. I like that rather than bounce back. Maximize business performance, actively listen to and care for our team members, build a more inclusive future, prioritize continuous learning, recognition and career management, and develop next level leadership and ampl amplify our value proposition. So these are the HR area goals for every single Hilton everywhere in the world. Oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. I'm after hitting the wrong button there. Um, so I put these down to five pillars. So it, to attract and select the best talent in the industry as we rebuild our team in 2021 and to ensure we retain the top talent that we already have. Maximize business performance by revitalizing the luxury mindset to win on customer experience differentiation. In Hilton, all of the area VPs would be strongly of the opinion HR have the biggest impact on that luxury mindset of our team members, even rather than HR managers. Build a more inclusive future by listening to our team members, improving engagement and encouraging balance for better. Develop future leaders by prioritizing continuous learning, recognition and career development. And then amplify the use of social media for promoting our team member value proposition for attracting and selecting and retaining talent. 
So I'm going to go through the points of literally the activities because it puts meat on this strategy so you understand what I'm going to do. It isn't just a piece of paper that was written at the beginning of the year, but I go back to this every month and tailor all my tasks around it. So we have a global team member survey done every year. We didn't do it last year, but we still have one from last year. And our 4D team is our four directors. So director of finance, director of HR, commercial director and operations director. So we will implement three key actions from the feedback we got from our global team member survey. Refresh and train leaders in the business on competency-based interviewing and acquiring talent. So I need to be very careful that as the war for talent starts, as all hotels reopen everywhere in the world and we're all looking for the best people, that we don't panic hire, but we make sure that we get the right people. Focus on selection criteria by supporting leaders create candidate specifications when hiring and using those Hilton value set, remember the hospitality, integrity, leadership. So we, again, very much about um, making sure we're taking on the right team members. Redefine the future of work. The fact is we all knew flexibility and innovation was coming down um, the road. Um, I think the world was what we all expected to happen maybe over a decade or 20 years of people, this hybrid working literally had to happen in a month. Um, and the fact is, we as an industry can't say, well, we're hotels, we all have to be on site for guests. That's not actually true. We need to be flexible in our thinking. Um, work on our great places to, uh, the Great Places to Work submission, because that is a real um, USP for us attracting talent, in, uh, particularly in Ireland, to be honest. Um, build on the hospitality school relationships and intern conversion, which is what I'm doing today. Um, leverage the epic model from the power of moments. Um, this is a brilliant book. Our area director of HR for Luxury sent this to all her HR directors um, in November uh, last year, as in 2019. It's a very powerful book and fascinating by human behavior, and I'd strongly recommend that you get it. And um, just some wonderful stuff on how to, how to create powerful moments with your team members. Remember, this isn't about the guest, but if we can create that powerful connection with team members, then we have amazing team members and they're automatically creating those connections with our guests. The next pillar. So the luxury mindset. So we have pre-shift briefings. So our L&D manager works on a luxury pre-shift calendar, focusing on different things that we pick up on with all guests every day. Implementing peer-to-peer -peer feedback rather than that usual cascading down of feedback. And um, creating an are you ready to start a shift checklist and one for each department and to improve on storytelling and guest interactions. And um, this is particularly, I mentioned the local and um, authentic connections. Irish people are known for their gift of the gap and our storing telly and our genuine interest in people. And that's what guests expect when they come to Ireland. However, everybody working for us isn't Irish. So we need all of our team to have that skill. So we need to help them with that if it doesn't come naturally. To them. And then we're looking at enhancing the onboarding experience because we believe from the minute that we even are in the interview with somebody, we subtly create that luxury mindset for them. So new leaders check, checklist and an onboarding booklet for them. We already have an onboarding booklet that applies to all team members that's luxury focused, but we want to do one for new leaders coming in. We need to, we're, we want to create the bridge from the time we say you're hired to actually start, because for some people that could be anything from two weeks up to eight weeks, depending on their notice period. And we want to make sure we bridge that gap. How will my first week look? Insert into the orientation booklet to help take some of the fear out of, out of it for somebody starting a new job. And implementing HOD videos to welcome. So when we, the week before somebody's coming for orientation, we want to have a nice little clip that we forward to them from their HOD saying, looking forward to seeing you next Monday. And um, just again, they have the feeling, oh, that's the face, that's my new boss. So um, 
driving that inclusive culture and, and that whole listening to team members, it can be tricky because senior managers assume they know what everybody thinks, but we don't. And we have to understand that. So we need to drive communication with the hotel to ensure team member engagement. Enhance career chats and development plans. We're already pretty good at it, but like anything in life, there's always room for improvement. The rep line is our team member representative committee. So we want to think about maybe making it a little bit more dynamic. Um, create an inclusive environment, focus on an underrepresented group. Now I have women in brackets because this is a common goal for all the Hiltons everywhere in the world. And as you can imagine, the underrepresented group in America or in South Africa or China or Germany or Ireland, that could actually be very different. Um, in ours, it is actually women. Um, on the, when we came into, when as the pandemic started, almost every HOD we had were men. They were all just there a very long time. And um, so it meant in our leadership circle, let's say the 15 people of 4Ds, general manager and HODs, there was only actually four women. Um, so th that's not right because the workforce is about 50-50. So that's why we've chosen to focus on women. So usually around International Women's Day, Hilton, we do some big events. And we're going to organise a discussion within our hotel on how we're going to make it better. And um, create a female leadership circle within our hotel of female leaders who can literally have those one on ones with females to um, increase their confidence in, in them going forward for um, their careers. And um, we also ensure all leaders complete unconscious bias training. Um, we all have unconscious bias. I have unconscious bias, which means that we tend to favour people who are a bit more like us. So that's where our problem was in the Conrad Dublin. If you mainly have men doing all the interviewing, they naturally, it, it, there's nothing wrong with it. it. It's how we are all built as humans, but we have to recognise it so we can make more informed decisions when we're aware of our own unconscious biases. We also put in the policy that a female leader is to be present during all interviews. That was really to help with that unconscious bias. And you know what? In the previous year before pandemic, it really started to help. So the message of that was to communicate with strong leadership. So it's, that's a good example. People go, oh, yeah, women can do well here and to and guard against that unconscious bias. Our HR department reviews, so doing regular um, meetings um, with the HODs and their relevant director to identify the team straight, uh, strengths and future leaders. So we have a leadership essential skills series where we have bite-sized training every second week that focuses on skills that we know in need enhancing within the business. Learning and development to drive departmental trainer effectiveness to enhance luxury standards. And then Hilton have launched this year LEAD 1.1, 1.2 and 1.3, which are line staff up to supervisor, supervisor up to HOD and HOD um, up to director level. So we've already set our target that we're going to have eight participants for LEAD 1, five participants for LEAD 2 this year. LEAD 3 we're going to confirm a little later in the year when we actually start the business going again. Shine 1 and 2 are for employees already with Hilton and Shine is HOD to get to 4D, Shine 1, and Shine 2 is for 4D to get to general manager. So we want to identify people within our team to go into our three-year L&D plan that we can put forward for that. Career clinics, so people have direct access to myself and the L&D manager to create career roadmaps. Cross exposure in the hotel, very common thing I hear. Oh, I'd love to get a bit of experience on front desk or I'd love to get a bit of experience front of house or I'd love to see what it's like in the kitchen. Participate in local recognition awards for team members. Hilton have a huge amount of recognition awards, but it really would help um, our attracting the right talent and recognising our team members and rewarding them by going through for local awards for um, like junior manager of the year or barista of the year, cocktail maker of the year. And um, so uh, participating in local awards within Ireland for that. 
And then the internal hotel, we have our own um, recognition program, which is Inspire Awards. So we're going to revitalize and relaunch that once we get going again. And then there are numerous Hilton rewards. So we want to retrain all our leaders in those and how to implement and use them the best. And then amp amplifying the social media. So improving the quality of our Instagram posts. So we are going to use a bit of peer-to-peer -peer coaching again. Um, there's no point me doing all the Instagram posts. Um, I'm not the age group we're trying to attract. So we need a lot of collaboration. Um, so we're going to do that also cross hotel property. Um, we find also the success stories of team members getting promoted and the like. They are always huge um, feedback on Instagram. Improving our hotel linked uh, in account, um, we add about 100 contacts per month. And we have to say, I, I'm not sure how it might be in the UK, but in Ireland, LinkedIn has huge traction uh, for making connections and for finding jobs. And then we also have our internal social media. Um, I'm very thankful that we had done a lot of work in our hotel on that internal social media before the pandemic hit. When everything hit and everybody had to go back to their houses and they weren't in work, we already had a really active WhatsApp and Facebook group. So keeping that communication going and trying to keep them upbeat and informed was already in place, um, which was a huge help to us um, when the worst happened. So I know I, I probably whizzed through that quite quickly and there's an awful lot of information in there, but I did want to give you a lot of detail around this strategy and um, because that's the whole point, it's to help you learn in, in a real business um, what we do um, and we write these strategies, not just sit on a shelf, but to really help us um, build our business. So I'll, I'll see if there's any questions on any of that. Thank you, Neve. Uh, there's been quite there's been a few uh, comments and things coming through on there, but I've taken some notes on here, and there's a few that people have been liking, and the one that's had the most likes on there, um, and it is strategic, strategy related as well. Is have you faced any issues or struggles as a female in the in hospitality management? Uh, yes. Um, I won't lie. Um, I think for me, I got to a general manager, but I had to work extremely, I had to work harder for it. And um, I think this, and, uh, and I want to be really clear now, this isn't men keeping women, women down. This is a societal issue that's generational, has gone on for a very long time. And um, so I'm not sure, I don't have all the solutions. I think Women also need to think bigger. I think um, particularly for anybody getting promoted, there's a lot to be said for those building relationships, networking, going out, having your coffee with the right people and having the chat with the right people. And I often think women are good at that. We're very focused on our work and we're like, oh, I'm busy, too busy to go off and have a chat for half an hour. I have to get my job done. Um, so I would say, and I think the unconscious bias there would be a huge problem, I think, within all industries in that most hotel owners are men. So they obviously have a say in who becomes a general manager. Um, and that uncon unconscious bias uh, kicks in a fair bit too. Um, it just is a reality. Uh, it's something we face, but it doesn't mean you can't get there. I said I wanted to be a general manager and I was a general manager opening a hotel in London by the time I was 33. Um, if you want it, you can do it. Um, and thank goodness, I think the hospitality industry, those days of having to work an 80 hour week to prove yourself, they're all gone. That doesn't exist anymore. Um, so I think the opportunities are much greater. Um, you just have to believe in yourself. I think that is often the biggest problem that women face in industry is having the confidence to believe they're the ones that can get all the way to the top. Thank you for that. A uh, uh, couple of final questions there for you. Um, there's recent reports in aviation uh, suggesting there's a decline in future business travel because of the pandemic. They've seen a significant drop in business travel, especially in the luxury sector, so Etihad, Emirates, et cetera, on there. Um, and they're downscaling their premium products now uh, quite significantly. What's your view on that? And what do you think is the potential impact upon that in terms of strategic direction of the luxury hotel sector? 
Um, that's an interesting question. Um, however, I actually don't believe um, that they're correct in that I think um, that hospitality, our, our area director, or our area director for UK and Ireland, Steve Cassidy, came on our HR call in November and he said the same thing he did the previous year at our area HR meeting. The future of hotels is in that budgety um, stay city, you know, that hiring an apartment or just basic service property or luxury. People aren't really going for the mid range anymore. They either want an amazing experience or just somewhere to sleep. Um, and I don't believe for one second that people don't want to travel. <laughs> I think once this vaccine has been fully rolled out, people's hunger to travel uh, will be huge. Answering the, bu the business side of it, um, I don't think you, we all know and you all know you've been going through it for a year trying to learn. You can never change that networking, that water cooler chat that um, everybody would know, every HR conference I've ever gone to, I've learned a lot on the um, main part of it, you know, when you're all sitting in a room talking, but some of the best learning is when you're outside on the coffee or when you're having dinner that night and you're sharing your experiences. Companies are going to want to bring that back. Innovation, ideas, collaboration, they happen better in person. That's just a fact. And I think um, in Conrad, we do very well from big international companies sending, you know, that um, um, MICE business, the big incentive sending their 200 best salespeople on a fabulous trip over to Ireland with all the bells and whistles. That's all still going to happen. Um, so I, I, I think they're wrong. I think Michael O'Leary, head of Ryanair, bless him, even at the beginning of this pandemic, I think he went out and bought a load of planes. He is still complaining about it a bit and he's the first to give out. Um, but I think in the long run, it, it won't come back by the end of this year. But within two to three years, it will be back where it was. People want to travel and they want great experiences. I really believe it. OK, thank you. Uh, I just want a very quick question, if you may. Um, how do you differentiate your brand looks and strategies to those of your competitors? Um, and that is that is a good question. I think um, we have a couple of really um, unique selling points in Hilton. Um, first of all, our clearly defined luxury brand. Um, I'm lucky that in Har Ireland we don't actually have that many huge international chains, so it it actually really gives us a leg up. Some of the best hotel in hotels in Ireland are actually independent; they're not actually part of international chains. So you can go and work for a luxury hotel in Ireland, but you can't necessarily have access to what Hilton has to offer with all its development programs, the Go, the go Hilton, the fact that you can travel and um, you can progress so much faster because if you're willing to travel, the opportunities come up so fast within a company the size of Hilton. Um, I think the fact that in Hilton, our luxury brand is Waldorf Astoria, Conrad and Alex Orr, when you're putting our brand in with Waldorf Astoria, it kind of that that speaks volumes itself. I, hope, again, I hope, hope that answers it. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, I'll hand back over to Dr. Camila Tosa to um, uh, finish the session for us. Thank you, Lane. And uh, thank you very much, Neve, uh, for that uh, beautiful presentation. Um, I think it's covered uh, a lot in that uh, space of time um, uh, on issues relating to sustainability, customer care and rewards, uh, staff health and well-being. Uh, the three, I, li I really like that three uh, part agenda of body, mind and spirit, very powerful. And also the placement opportunities available uh, to our students and uh, the public. Uh, very good graduate schemes. And the, your employability tips, I think that really uh, corroborate what we've been saying to our students. Uh, hopefully that will really uh, uh, go down well with them and it will help them in their next le uh, 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 move. Uh, the strategic element is really good. Uh, she explored the 
uh, six uh, 2021 goal areas. And then she then uh, analyzed the five uh, areas of focus for HR uh, department across, across the chain. Very, very illuminating, very enlightening. Uh, on behalf of uh, the Univers University of Derby and specifically the College of Business Law and Social Sciences, I thank you very much for the time you've spent with us very very productive and useful and then um, because we have recorded the session uh, we will be sharing it with our colleagues that uh, haven't got, had the opportunity to join us uh, this afternoon uh, again i thank all the organizers uh, as well as uh, those who have joined us this afternoon i hope you find the experience very helpful uh, thank you very much for attending and thank you very much once again uh, Niamh, for for your time and uh, I'm sure colleagues will be uh, writing you, I mean, uh, individually uh, for further tips and opportunities within your chain and in your capacity as an HR director. Thank you very much. So. Not at all. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I might try and answer some of the questions that were on the chat over the next few minutes, but I, I probably tried to pack too much information in, so I didn't leave enough for the questions and answers. Next time I, I will be, I will give more time to that. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending and I'll draw, draw the curtain on this note. Enjoy the rest thank of the afternoon.